What's going on, everybody? My name is Tamar Turner, and I'm the host of the Down to Business podcast, where the mission is to really provide exposure to businesses, entrepreneurs, and artists all around the world in their respective crafts. And we do so through audio and visual interviews where we come on and we talk about all things from getting into the business to most memorable moments to even some advice that you may give for other business owners and entrepreneurs out there. So if this sounds like something that you would be interested in, we'd love to have you on for an interview. Please be sure to reach out via any social media platform and we'll definitely get back to you. But until then, enjoy this episode. All right, everybody, it is a new year, which means new content. Welcome back again to the Down to Business podcast with Tamar Turner. And um, I just want to thank everybody out there who's been tuning in so far. I know we started uh, last month and really got some good feedback from everybody. Really had a lot of people reach out to me, not only to want to be a part of it, but also just to tell me that they're listening, tell me that they like what I'm doing, tell me that they like the content, that they've even reached out um, to some of the people who are bought on. So Like I said, nonetheless, new year, which means new content. So I hope everybody had a great holiday, um, whether it be Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. And then I hope everybody was able to bring in the new year with some good vibes, with some good family, some good friends. So today I'm actually sitting down with Whitney with W Cosmetics. And so we chatted a little bit beforehand. She kind of gave me um, an intro, who she was, um, what she did, how long she's been in business. And she actually has some really nice accolades that I can't wait to get into as this interview progresses. So Whitney... Um, just tell everybody how you're doing out there today. And then kind of just to start things off, can you just tell everybody a little bit about yourself and a little bit about how your brand W Cosmetics got started? Sure. Well, first off, thank you for having me. And like you said, my name is Whitney Taylor and I'm the owner and founder of W Cosmetics. So a little bit about myself is I've been in the beauty industry for 10 going on 11 years now. Um, I started working for some really, really huge cosmetic brands. So I used to be a retail artist for MAC. I've worked there for a few years. I also used to manage YSL Beauty. And I used to also work in the beauty department inside of Nordstrom for a few years as well. So I have a pretty diverse background when it comes to artistry. Uh, whether that's on the prestige side, whether that's more on the mass side there as well. Um, I went to Westchester University. I graduated from there with my degree in communication and business. So that's a little bit about the background on that. I started W Cosmetics back in 2013. I took a little bit of a break and then relaunched it again back in 2017. And here we are today. So you can see us on celebrities such as Vivica Fox. You can see us on Sunny Hostin. We've been featured in Philadelphia Magazine, USA Today Magazine. So we've been a couple of places where you may recognize us. Okay. Okay. And so so like I told y'all, we got right into it. I told y'all she really had some accolades um, worth talking about. And and here you go. Just a few right there. So I kind of want to rewind a little bit and go back. So I heard you say that you basically started this in 2013, took a break revamped in 2017. So over that four year period, were you were you still just doing things kind of on the down low, still trying to perfect different things? Did 2013 teach you um, something that you knew you kind of to just that you knew you needed to just kind of take a break and then come back for things in 2017? What was that period like when you weren't in business? Oh, absolutely. So I started out in 2013 because I knew that I wanted to have a cosmetic brand. That's just something that I've always known since I could even remember. But I also knew that I had pretty much no background in it. I didn't know about the marketing. I didn't know about the business aspect of it. I pretty much only knew about the artistry. So once I started in 2013, I decided to put it on halt for a second. I'm like, okay, you need to go out there. You need to make sure that you understand everything that you can understand in order to put out the best product that you can. So within that time period between 2013 and 2017, I decided to take a lot of cosmetic jobs. So that's when I started working for Mac and uh, went through all of their trainings and tried to get as much knowledge from that that I could. I also went and started working for YSL and I got to learn a whole new demographic of people because obviously the Mac customer and the YSL customer is completely different. And then when I worked at Nordstrom, that pretty much gave me the idea of 
understanding every demographic there possibly could because working in the, the beauty department in Nordstrom, you have to work, even though you have your own specific brand that you work for, you still have to know every single cosmetic brand that they offer in that store. So if a customer comes in, asks you a question, you have to be able to answer it to the best of your knowledge. So that gave me the opportunity to understand ingredients. It gave me the opportunity to understand how people shop, uh, what customer service looks like, what good customer service and bad customer service looks like. So pretty much just kind of molded me for getting to my own business because as of right now, being a one man show, I have to play every single role in my business. So stepping back and doing a little bit more research and working for other companies gave me the ability to be able to do my own thing. I love that. And you really just helped me even segue into my next question about you said that you're kind of just a one man show with operating on your, well, first and foremost, my, my, First question was going to be, do you, are you looking to kind of add anybody to your business? What is it like kind of operating um, by yourself? Like what are your daily operations when it comes to monitoring this business from start to finish? Okay. So <laughs> it's definitely a lot. So from the first thing that I always do, let's say when I wake up in the morning, I always go into the back end of my website. I have to check what the traffic, what the traffic is looking like. Um, have people purchased? How much people have purchased? And then let's say if the sales aren't where they want, where I want them to be, I have to look. Okay, why isn't this working? Or why is this moving in a way that's unexpected than what I thought it was going to move? So it's really getting down to understanding the analytics of the website, which. As somebody who that's not really my field of what I what I've learned, that's a little bit more difficult for me. So I do take a lot of time to try to research and understand that part of it. And then outside of the actual website and the analytics of it, I also have to do the creative part, which is whether that's coming up with designs and the marketing and creating ads um, to be sent out, whether it's Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram. I have to pretty much make a presence known on every platform that I can. And then outside of that, I also have to do email marketing, making sure I stay engaged with new customers that may come to my website, potential customers, or even customers who have already purchased and just keeping them engaged with the website. And then I also want to go and get new people. So pretty much you can't just have your whole business, everything be on social media. So I try to do brand awareness, whether that's just sometimes I'll just go out, wear my W Cosmetics hoodie, my W Cosmetics shirt, and I'll just walk around the store, have my face done, just try to introduce myself to people, talk to people in cosmetic departments, people that may be walking around the mall. So you pretty much have a little bit of everything that you have to do just about getting new customers, keeping customers, keeping the business running. And then outside of that, I also have the shipping, the logistics part. So I have to make sure I fulfill all the orders, make sure everything's packaged. I like to do handwritten notes. So every single customer gets a handwritten note. So being a one man show is a little bit difficult because I'm spreading myself thin doing every single job, but I appreciate it only because having to understand every single job, I'll know, all right, these are my strengths, these are my weaknesses. And then when I get to the point where I can hire somebody, I can hire accordingly. Got you, got you, got you. And I and you even kind of made me go back to my previous interview that I had with um Trey. Mm -hmm. He was episode two about drop shipping and how he kind of goes through other outlets and how he always doesn't feel like it's mm -hmm. personable, how he sometimes feels like these right. um these resources are kind of just sending them out to the other people. But like you said, you kind of include that personal letter. Um, that thank you for shopping. And, and I, I think it makes customers just appreciate things a lot more. So, okay. In, in working for these, like these prestigious stores that you said, whether it be YSL, whether it be Mac, did you start to notice, like, were they inspiring you in a way? Were you just taking some of the things that you learned from there, the do's and the don'ts and kind of translating that into your own business, would you say? Absolutely. Um, I'll say, I'll talk to you about the two different ones that I did between Mac and YSL. When I worked for Mac, I think that that was, for me at least, just with my experience, that helped me way more when it came to the artistry side. That helped me understand the actual development and the color, the products. That's where I learned the most. And with the customers that came in, they really didn't care much about you selling them anything about the ingredients or anything like that. They really just wanted to know, hey, 
I need my makeup done. So that's where I got the most practice. And that helped me now in this business with W Cosmetics, because now I'm like, all right, these are the type of colors that this age group likes. This is the type of texture that they like. This is the type of finish that they like. So that helped me in that aspect. It wasn't until I became a manager at YSL that I really understood the business part of it, where I had to have spreadsheets and understand marketing and understand that, all right, this is how much we did this year. Now we need to do this much this year in order to pretty much to keep the business running. And that was honestly the most difficult part of, I think that's probably the most difficult job that I've ever had because at that point, that's when I was held accountable for everybody else that was, that will be working there at the counter with me because at the end of the day, if I wasn't making the numbers or if the uh, employees weren't making the numbers, it wasn't like I was the first person to go. It would be whether it was the freelancer people that were coming in or the part-timers that were coming in. So I had way more responsibilities as becoming a manager. So I think that that really helped me with W Cosmetics because now, even though it's just me, I look at it in a place where you, I have to work hard and I have to go above and beyond every single day, whether it's just making sure I make sales goals or making sure I understand the analytics. It just, it just gave me a different level of understanding whether than when I worked at Mac, where that was more artistry based. Gotcha. Okay. That, that makes absolute sense. Honestly, when it came to, or when it comes to, I guess there, I'm starting to notice, um, even when I was in East Carolina university, which is where I did my undergrad, oh, nice. probably within the last couple of years or so, I've noticed that a lot of Women, even some men are really starting to move into the cosmetics industry, whether it be um, with makeup specifically. A lot of people are even moving towards like the hair, the nails, the glitz and the glams of everything. So what do you as W Cosmetics, as a business owner, what do you do to differentiate yourself from from everyone out there? Whether you see them as competition, whether you see them as um, people just within this industry, what do you do to make W Cosmetics be just that entity? Well, there are a few things that I try to do. Um, when it comes to the product itself, I always try to make sure that we have an uh, above the par product. So I want to make sure that all our products are good for you. None of them are unhealthy. We, um, our liquid lipsticks, because as of right now, we have liquid lipsticks, lip glosses, and lip liners, and also um, lip scrubs. So right now, we just focus in on that. We want to make sure that all of our products, we keep them cruelty-free, vegan and paraben free. So you don't have to feel like you're putting anything harmful on your body. And as far as the liquid lipsticks, the one thing that I really want to point out about that, one thing that I hear all the time is I love liquid lipsticks. They're really nice. They last long, but they are dry and they feel like it's sucking the life out of their lips. So I created a product there where you have the longevity, you have the pigment, you have a product that's good for you, but it does not suck the life out of your lips. It still feels super moisturizing and you, you can wear it all day. And that's one of the reasons why I feel as though that I have been above the competition a little bit because people can feel that difference okay. outside of the product itself. Because I do go, go above and beyond when it comes to those handwritten notes. I reach out to every customer. Um, I send them a thank you email after every single time they make a first purchase, just to let them know that I appreciate their purchase. And, you know, if they ever have any questions, they can come back to me or they can just let me know. I think that that makes them feel like they are part of the family. They're not just a number. They're not just a sale. I want each and every person to know that they are part of the family and it's a community. And I think that's one thing that's really sets us apart because not every business is any business really goes above and beyond like that. You'll get the thank you notes or you may get an email, but I always send a personalized email to every single person, no matter what. Well, like you said, with the um, with kind of wanting to stay above putting your all into it, being as personable as possible, where would you say you get a lot of your motivation from? Like, is it from um, other companies? Is it from people who are supporting you? Is it from yourself? Is it just from thinking about your business journey? What would you say motivates you the most? I think what motivates me is just knowing exactly where I came from and where exactly I want to go. Because sometimes I sit down, I think, and I'm like, well, if you weren't doing this, what else would you want to do? And there's nothing else that I really could 
see myself doing. So I think that's where the um the motivation comes from because I want to be in a place where I can be that outlet both for myself and both for my family, just having freedom financially and just being an inspiration to my younger sister to for her to know that, you know, hey, listen, if you put your mind to something and if you work hard and you go after it, you can achieve anything that you put your mind to do. So I think that having her there watching every step that I make Mm -hmm. is what keeps me motivated to keep on going and inspires me because I'm like, I don't want her to see her sister as a quitter or see her sister as, Hey, she did something, but she didn't complete it. So like that, I don't want her to feel like that's okay. I want her to say like, you know what, this is what I want to do. Work hard at it and you can get whatever you want. And while you really, me and you kind of echo the same sentiment when it comes to having a younger sibling um, that Mm -hmm. looks up to you, because I feel the exact same way about my little brother, even for some things where I may feel as though I I might have bit off a little bit more than I could chew or some things where I kind of may have a regret about it. But I always just think like, look, I can't, I could never tell my little brother I quit. I can really never be comfortable with telling anybody that I quit, but especially not somebody who's looking up to me, especially not somebody who, like you said, you try to be that good role model for you, try to make sure that everything you do is on the positive side. So I definitely echo that sentiment 110%. Exactly. Yeah. And I also feel, because I feel like I've done a lot of things that there weren't things that I wanted to do. So Mm -hmm. my parents wanted me to do um, things with radio and communication. Hence the reason why I took um, communications in college, Mm -hmm. but I also decided to add in the business on there for myself. And I tried doing things and I'm like, you know, I'm just not happy doing this. I don't, it's it's not something that like sparks me because I did internships at radio stations. And I was like, you know, I always found myself going back to makeup. So I'm like, you know, you have to do what makes you happy. And I felt like this was the only thing that I really stuck with and that I've never quit on. Got you. And so was there any point in this journey, whether it be 2013, whether it be 2017 recently, where you were kind of just looking at things and maybe you weren't making the progress that you want to, you thought about maybe pursuing um, another app. And I know you said that you never quit on it clearly because you're still here making it happen. But was there ever a point where you were kind of just on the fence about things, things just weren't moving in your direction or you thought about maybe um, pursuing other things or were you always just, look, I know that this is what I want to do. I really do um, enjoy what I do. I've enjoyed working for other I'm cosmetic companies. And this is something that I really want to take off and brand for myself. Oh, absolutely. All the time. There are times when I was just like, you know what? I don't understand like what's going on. Why aren't sales the way they're supposed to be? But there's never been a time where I never wanted to have W Cosmetics or wanted to quit on it. But there were times where I, I, I just didn't know what to do. And even till this day, sometimes I just... I just want to vent to people about, I'm like, I don't know what direction I'm supposed to move in. So like, I'll give you an example. So there was one manufacturer that I was working with and long story short, I placed my order for, uh, for them to go into production. They ended up charging me way, way, way more than what we had already assigned and agreed on. And one thing about me, I do not, um, play when it comes to finances and my money. So I like to be very strategic and I like to have everything budgeted and written down. So I know exactly where every cent is going. So when I saw they took more money than what was agreed upon at that point, I'm like, all right, this is a manufacturer that I know that I cannot trust because you just freely went to my account and took more money than what you were supposed to. And at that point I said, okay, I have to leave this manufacturer. And I, it was, literally right in the middle of Black Friday. And I'm like, how am I going to get people these products? And now I don't have a manufacturing company. So that was one of the situations where I just felt like, I'm like, you know, I want to quit. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. And thankfully I was able to muster up more finances and I was able to find a new manufacturer, but I didn't know how I was going to get out of that jam because I was in a huge jam. And then, or there's another situation where one day I have people emailing me all the time, asking me, Hey, where are my products? Where are my products? Where are my products? <laughs> and I was so, I was so confused because I know one thing that I stand behind that customers, unless it's a weekend, whenever a customer places the order, their order gets shipped out same day or the next day okay. with, without a question. That's one thing that I'm, I'm very proud to say that. 
I have always stuck with. So when people were sending me these things, I'm like, what are you talking about? And then, so they sent me their order confirmation email. Another company was using my name wow. outside, outside of the wow. United States. <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, wait, I have this trademark. I don't understand what's going on. And I had no idea what to do. So, you know, I tried to consult with other people and they're like, well, you know what, this is going to be a legal battle, but they're outside of the United States. So it's going to cost tons of money that I did not have. So I had no idea what I was going to do. And by the grace of God, it's funny because my grandmother um, sent me this article that she had saw and she said, hey, Penn Law is doing uh, free consultations with lawyers where they will able, they'll be able to help out any situation as long as it has to do with trademarks. And I said, wow, what is the likelihood that that would happen in the, in the time that I needed it the most? Right. Right, so I was right. able to get that situation fixed too. So there's always something that's just going to happen. And you're just like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to quit. It's, but you know, as long as you stick through it, just take everything as a learning lesson. So that's what I try to do. Most definitely. It's something that I really want to communicate from the intro episode until um, forever, until this thing is done with, which I hope never happens. But that business won't always be peaches and cream. Business won't always be um just happy go lucky. Like you said, like we've heard Whitney struggles, but you've heard um, Jordan struggles, my first interview, and you've even heard Trey struggles, my second interview, that everybody has those days where some days you just wake up, things are just not going your way. Whether it be customer satisfaction, whether it be manufacturing issues, whether it be whatever, just cancellations, some things that you can't even help. But if you always just have that mission, that mindset, that goal in the in the back, or sometimes even in the forefront of your brain, you always just got to keep going, just always have to push through. So I get that. Okay. So now with being um, cosmetics, with wanting to make people look their best, feel their best, who would you say is your ideal crowd? Does W Cosmetics have an ideal crowd or do you guys really just make products for anybody, young, old, middle aged, whatever the case may be? So contrary to popular belief, I know a lot of people would say, you know, you need to have a target audience. But I feel like with cosmetics and the way that we create them, that we want to make it comfortable enough for anybody to come in wear our products. Now, I will say we are for the makeup enthusiasts. So that would be anybody who enjoys makeup or people who just likes to play with makeup. So you don't have to be a makeup expert but you don't have to have like no knowledge of makeup at all. So, well, we like to categorize it as the makeup enthusiasts. Okay. I like that. I like that. Now with, um, with kind of just what you do um, from start to finish, would you, mm -hmm. do you offer like any services or classes maybe to people who may be interested in getting into this industry or um, are there any, I know you said that you're kind of just a one man band right now, which is great, but moving forward, are you ever looking to, kind of add to your business, kind of just see maybe different people fill different roles, maybe even internships or whatever the case may be, just because you've been around for so long and are having so much success with this. Oh, absolutely. Um, I always try to, I definitely want to help out people who may want internships. Um, I do want to start filling in spots eventually because I can't do that right now at this point, but I do want to start expanding on having a team to kind of alleviate some of the pressure off of me from doing everything so I can put more focus on things that I find to be a little bit more important where I need to be putting my focus at. So I definitely want to do that. I have had people reach out as far as internships and I try my best as much as I can to help out aspiring makeup artists, aspiring um, entrepreneurs who maybe want to be in the um, beauty industry. I try my best to help them out as much as I can. I know a lot of people want to see, touch, feel, be with me all the time. And I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm like, I can't. But like, I'll talk to you on the phone. I'll try to help out via email as much as I can. But when I get to a place, when I actually have a team, a physical location where I can actually, you know, have someone come in, I'll definitely be open to that, to that idea. Because I find that the world's only going to rotate if we share knowledge. And I didn't come get here all on my own. I've had people that I've talked to to try to help me, whether it came through business or through artistry. So it'll be extremely selfish of me to not want to share that information with the next person. That's truly a message. Most definitely. I agree with that. What is your favorite product to date and why? 
okay. Yeah, I had to, I had to switch it up. For me. <laughs> Wait, I had to pick a favorite. Okay, um, my favorite one would have to be our high shine lip gloss in the shade Boss. One I'm gonna, because yeah, I'm just gonna act like I know what that means, but I'm just gonna let you explain it. <laughs> okay, so we have um lip gloss. It's super shiny. It's not sticky. It's not tacky, but it's thick enough where you still can see the color of the lip gloss. And that has been my favorite and everyone's favorite one because of the name. Um, I chose that name because. I just feel like it's one of those colors where you just walk into the room it, it matches with any look you're going to go for, whether that's with your makeup, whether it's with your clothes, it just matches everything. And you just, you feel empowered when you wear that, when you wear that color. So that's why that was my favorite. Got you. Okay. 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 And so now with the new year on the horizon, we're about three days in maybe four or five when some people uh, will hear this, but what, goals do you have if any or what are you looking to do with w cosmetics by the end of this year or even moving forward whether they be short-term goals long-term goals where do you what do you have for this company do you have any um, new releases that you're expecting coming up new products new partnerships whatever the case may be can you drop something for us oh of course okay so this year what i really want to focus on is brand awareness so that is our main goal so we do want to grow nationally and internationally. So that is the first thing. We are looking to expand outside of the lip category. So we will have some releases that are not in the lips. So whether it's eyes and face, so that will be dropping this year. Our long-term goal is to be the number one beauty brand in the world. And that is, that's where we have tunnel vision at. So that's where we I'm excited for. But in order to get there, we have to start off small and grow out. So we're just looking to reaching out. We are looking to get into more publications, whether that's blogs, magazines, reaching out to try to get some celebrity endorsements. So okay. that's really where, where my head is. Okay, gotcha. In the world. I like that. That's yes, number one beauty brand in the world. Can't stop till I get you. there. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop. Most definitely. I like the sound of that for sure. So uh, just before I let everybody um, find out where they can contact you at or where they can reach you or even shop at, because I definitely do want to check out your website too, probably brush up on my cosmetic terminology because Lord knows I'm definitely out of the loop. I got Is there you. Anything? <laughs> yeah, please help me out with that. Is there anything that you want to add, whether it be about the business, whether it be about W Cosmetics, whether it be about aspiring, maybe cosmetic, cosmetologists, excuse me, or whether it just be for anybody out there who may just be listening to this interview, anything that you think they should know or you feel um, was left out or you didn't touch on today? What I would say is just keep going. That's, that's really the main thing that I want to put out there is for people to just keep going because the process is not easy. Um, I know one of the main questions that people always ask me is how did you do this? Or how much money do I need to start? Or what do I do? And the funny thing is you just have to be creative do whatever you can to get to the goal that you want to be. Because when people ask how much money do I have to start, I didn't have any money to start. I was working at a job and I'm like, all right, I don't have the money to get what I need to do. How am I going to be able to do this? I started doing makeup on um, clients, save that money, income tax time. I didn't go on vacations and buy a car and spend my money on reckless things. I saved my money and put that into my business. So you have to do what you have to do in order to get to where you want to be. And for anybody that wants to own a business, I always say that it's all about discipline, discipline discipline. I act broke. I have to condition my mind that I'm broke all the time because I'm like, I have to make sure that I feed my business. Your business is only going to grow if you feed it. So I'll sit at home and I'll make a sandwich or I'll make soup. So that way that $20, $25 that I would have spent on going out to eat, I'm going to put that back into my business. So it's only, your business is only going to work as hard as you do. So I always just encourage people to just go full force at what you want and it's it's going to happen and for us w cosmetics in the 
beauty sector. I'll just say that we're 100% cruelty-free, vegan, paraben-free. All of our products, you can mix colors to create your own personal cocktail. It's It caters to everybody. I find that the beauty industry is growing to a place of inclusivity, but it's not there yet. But Dobby Cosmetics is a brand for every single person to be who they are and to be unapologetically bold, not just with makeup, but in your day-to-day life. Okay. Wow. You just, wow. I didn't even want to say anything. <laughs> that. We could have, we could have just dropped the ball on that one. And you definitely made some, some really great points just from even kind of just triggered um, little fire under me, really just to, from the aspect of inve- the most important investment is investing in yourself and inve- investing in your business, investing in uh, what you want to do and what you your vision pretty much. So like you said, having that discipline, I, I I remember posting on Instagram a few days or like once a week, discipline December, really just waking up every day and really just keeping that tunnel vision, not being distracted by whether it be monetarily, whether it be spiritually, mentally, physically, just keeping your eyes on the prize. So that way the year um, can go the way that you want it to. And then the last point that I really liked that you touched on was just about being for everybody. I, I definitely do agree with you that not only the world, but a lot of different industries, brands, businesses are not all inclusive, no matter how much they say it or no matter how much they may try to make a product here or a product there just because um, they know that that's the morally right thing to do. But deep down inside, they know who they want to appeal to or they know um, who they want to target. So I definitely think the fact that you don't have that target audience, contrary to popular belief, is what we need. It's great. It's different just because people need that. You never know who is listening to this interview, who wants to support you, who wants to come out of their shell, whatever the case may be, who even may want to try to study cosmetology or get into this business. So I definitely think that that's, that's great. A hundred percent. So and you don't want to leave anybody else, out. no, absolutely not. Because they could, they could change your business, elevate your business, take your business to the next level. Word of mouth is very powerful. Social media is very powerful. Um, even just being on this podcast, just hearing what you have to say is very powerful to me. And you taught me a lot today. So moving forward, I definitely do want to communicate that to my viewers and, and spread that out. So with that, where can where can everybody find you? What's your where can people shop? Where can they they fill up their cards? Where are you on um, all social media platforms? Just certain ones, or um, do you want to drop your website too? Because when I um, drop the bio and everything, I want to make sure that I get I, I don't miss a beat. Oh, absolutely. So you can find us on our website at wcosmeticsbeauty.com. We are also on all social media platforms. So Instagram, we are official underscore W Cosmetics. On Facebook, we are official W Cosmetics. And on Pinterest and Snapchat and Twitter, we are W Cosmetics. Great, great, great. And you even got the Pinterest in there. I used to browse Pinterest when I had when I needed to just get my creative juices flowing. So you just took it a little back. Let me tell you this. One thing that people don't know, Pinterest makes you a lot of money. Oh, for sure. I could imagine. I could only imagine. <laughs> it definitely sounds like you have um, had tremendous success thus far back in 2013, really just um, keeping the faith and, and still being able to have that longevity still be here today, January 3rd of t- 2020. So I definitely um, do appreciate you sitting down um, with me today. And I, I just hope that all my viewers and listeners, excuse me, were able to get something out of this. And I do hope that moving forward, anybody interested or anybody just wanting to to switch brands or try something new, you definitely check out W Cosmetics because it sounds like she has um, a lot going for herself. And like you said, the number one beauty brand, not in Pennsylvania, not on the East Coast in the world. So definitely look out for Whitney and what she has coming. And to everybody out there, just thank you again for tuning into another episode of the Down to Business podcast. Let's start the year off right. Let's, Let's write all our goals down. Let's knock them out one by one. Everybody take care. We'll be back soon. 